Are you attached? I am. To I think I'm attached. Um, two apologies. I got up at half past five this morning, which isn't my normal getting up time. Um, obviously, all the farmers out there, I'm sure you do get up really. Also, I'm left-handed. I know it sounds really odd. For me, facing this side is really weird. <laughs> so I might sort of run across there at some point and see if I can... Do, I don't know why. It just feels weird. I can't explain it. Anyway. Um, yeah, my name's Kerry. I work for Growing Communities. I've been wait working for Growing Communities for a really, really long time. Before I say anything else, I don't think it's going to take 20 years or 30 years. I think it's going to take about 50 years. So just <laughs> to reform the food system, just to start on that. So what I'm going to talk about um, is what Growing Communities does, what we do that works, what hasn't perhaps worked quite so well, and what we've done to change it. And also I'm going to try and break it down into why some of the things that we do have worked I'm actually not just going to talk about the farmer's market either because I think I want to talk about all the things that we do. Um, but to start off with, I just want to explain why we do what we do, um, which a lot of it is to do what Chris was talking about earlier. I mean, basically, in Hackney, we want to try and change the whole food system, which is possibly a little bit ambitious <laughs> for us in, in Hackney, one of the most inner city boroughs in, in London, but that's our mission. And what we want to do is to try and create a more resilient, um, more sustainable food system, starting in Hackney. Um, and, you know, we've made a bit of progress. Um, but fundamental to that process, this is our aim, really, transforming food and farming. Fundamental to that process is starting to change the way we produce the food we grow. So that means growing food in a more sustainable way, organic, biodynamic, um, that sort of produce but what we know and we've seen this time and time again over the last 20 years that we've been operating that goes back much further is that if the farmers who are producing food in that sustainable way if they try and sell that food or distribute that food through the existing conventional food systems which essentially in our country is supermarkets they will go out of business they will end up like the thousands of farms, small farms and sustainable farms that have gone under in the last 40 or 50 years. So we need to do something else. We don't just need to change the way we, we grow or produce our food. We actually need to change the way that food is traded. And that for growing communities is absolutely fundamental. And that changes everything. And it also means that when you start growing food, that's what you've got to think about, is how you're actually going to trade that food and that's actually something you need to think about before you plant your first seed or even look at your first plot of land. I'd say that very strongly. So for growing communities, it's all about creating alternatives to the mainstream food system. And we've done that through our veg box scheme. Very recently, we've just decided we're going to call it what it actually is. We don't actually have boxes because we're in the middle of Hackney everyone comes on foot on bicycle public transport. we actually have bags so we're starting to call it a bag scheme but I'm finding it really difficult because I've been talking about it as a box scheme for the last um, very long number of years so I probably will refer to a box scheme but it is essentially bags so we run a veg bag scheme in Hackney and we've got about 950 households um, on the scheme and it's made up of 13 collection points across Hackney. Now I'm not going to talk that much about the box scheme now but I would like to talk about it later on because there's something about the collection point aspect to this which I really want to flag up to you in terms of possibly solving some of your problems that, you've, that came up earlier that people were talking about in terms of distribution um, and location. So. It's all based on collection. We also run a farmer's market, which is a completely organic and biodynamic farmer's market, and that's in the middle of Hackney. So, and we've been doing that, it's been running for 13 years. Um, so those are our two main alternatives to the main stream food system that we have. And we're calling this, um, we call it community-led trade, or more recently we started calling it radical retailing. We've got a bit of a thing about alliteration, I think. Uh, we also try and actually create more sustainably produced food actually in and around cities. And we do that um, on our patchwork farm across Hackney, which is um, 12, 13 actually, pretty much microscopic sites, most of them in Hackney, which produce salad, which is sold into our box scheme. And we also now have um, a farm, which we call Peri Urban Farm, 
um, that's a sort of type of farm, it's, it's just within the M25, um, and it's in Dagenham, um, and that's a 1.4 acre farm. When we got the farm from the council, they told us it was four acres, so only after two years we actually measured it and found out it was 1.4 acres, so it's even smaller, but it's all mostly covered growing, and that's also producing food which has been sold into our box scheme, about six tonnes last year. So one of the other things that Growing Communities does is to try and spread the knowledge that we've got because um, we've made loads of mistakes, loads, and we wanted to try and prevent other people from making those same mistakes just so they could learn a little bit from what we've done. So we have tried to help other people set up their own community-led box schemes, um, and that's just a few of the ones which are around London, um, although there are obviously others and other people we've worked with outside London. Um, and that programme's still carrying on. Uh, underneath everything that Growing Communities does, the reason, giving us the reason for what we do is that we're trying to create a more sustainable food system. As a way of doing that, we've got some key principles which underline everything that we do. And we use those principles as a way of checking back to see if what we're doing is actually going to make a difference, if it's actually going in the right direction, because it's really easy to lose your way, especially if you've been going for as long as we have, and your memory's going of it as well. So I'm not going to go through those principles in detail, but they're on our website and they're all here. I'm going to come back to them a little bit as well later on. The other thing which we have is a sort of vision really of what a more sustainable, more resilient food system might look like. Yes, it's going to be a multicoloured blob, which is exciting. This is sort of a map. It's a map in the same way a tube map is a map. It doesn't show you exactly how to get to places, but it shows you where things are in relation to each other. Um, it's our growing community's food zones diagram. And it basically just shows food starting off being grown as close as possible to where you are and moving out. And it's trying to show where we could get to eventually if we had a more sustainable system. You can't really see it there, it doesn't matter, but the bit in the middle is like where you are, where you start from. And this is out there. This is further and further away, out going out across Europe and beyond. So what I wanted to quickly talk about is what's actually worked. Has any of this stuff that we've been doing, we've been going a really long time, nearly 20 years, um, has any of it worked? Well, yes, some of it has, and the things that have worked, um, this is a, a sort of lovely game multicoloured diagram <laughs> showing the progress that we've made to actually achieving some of the targets in that sort of food zone thing I showed you before. I'm not going to go through all of this. This is 2008. And, and this is the last year that we've got our figures for. And it shows that we're actually moving towards, these are sort of targets that we had. So for example, what we wanted to get to was urban traded food. So that's the food actually grown right where we are in the middle of Hackney. Um, when, we start, when we started sort of counting this stuff up, it was you know 3.6% of the, the foods. And this is based on the food that's actually in our box scheme. So what people get every week in their veg bag, in 2008-2009, it was 3.6 percent of that produce was grown in Hackney. Most recent year, it was just over 5 percent was grown in Hackney. But really interesting, just to show what a difference things can make when you've got an outlet and you've got the produce. The Perry Urban, which is our Dagenham farm. So back then, in 2008, we had nothing. Nothing at all was coming from that area immediately around London. Nothing at all. When we got the Dagenham farm, that zoomed up to nearly 4 percent of food, and it'll be even more this year, over 5% of food is actually coming from that area. So th to that extent, what we've been doing has worked. But other things have worked as well. Um, I'm just going to put them all up because it's, it's, oops, that's what hasn't worked. <laughs> so at the moment, the, ve the veg box scheme in the market, every week we're feeding about 4,000 people. I mean, that is a tiny percentage of the number of people that live in Hackney. I mean, there's 18,000 people live around my house. I mean, not right around it, but <laughs> pretty close. Um, at the moment, we employ 27 people. Um, that's all part-time, but that's equivalent to 10 full-time jobs. So that's money and income going out into our community. We also, most importantly, the box scheme and the market between them support 25 small farmers and ultra-local producers, so people making cakes, but the majority of those are farmers, actual farmers in Kent and Essex and Cambridge and beyond. We've also helped 10 other local communities set up their own community-led box schemes. In terms of the peri urban market at Dagenham, that has been going since May 2012, and it now generates enough income to pay 
a full-time salary for a grower. Now, that salary is on the London living wage, which is £9.80 an hour. So it's not a fortune, but it does do that. And it also covers its costs, the rent, which we have to pay, <coughs> and the other costs. We've also managed to get the patchwork farm, which is our farm in Hackney. That now generates enough income to pay the grower for two days of work, um, full-time work. Um, and also, we also run a training programme. So far, since 2007, we've, been tr we've trained uh, 25 people in urban growing and food production, of which 23 of those are still working and growing food. So what hasn't worked? I mean, it's always really difficult, not just because of embarrassment to say what hasn't worked, but sometimes, you know, it's not like we've done something and it's been a total washout right from the word go. It's more been a case of adjusting things as we've gone along. But when growing communities started, which back in the eels of time, um, well, 1994, for those of you who can remember back there. Um, we started off as a CSA-type box scheme, where it was one farm in Buckinghamshire with random visits from people from Hackney going out and basically mucking about, trying to help the farmer, but not necessarily really doing much of that. Um, that the problem with that scheme was, for us, it didn't, it didn't feed enough people. It didn't, not only did it not feed enough people, it couldn't produce enough food to feed people all through the year. Um, so probably one of the first changes we made, and once we realised this, was to look for a solution which would enable us to feed people all year round. People need to eat all year round. Um, and so what we did was we actually moved to using a wholesaler for part of the year. Now, we're not talking about a vast number of items in the bag coming from a wholesaler, just a few, but that was enough to enable us to provide the bag all year round, which meant that then we could continue to take food from that, the other farmers, the actual local, ultra-local farmers, more of the year round. So we could take their swedes and their kale at the same time, so maybe having one or two items which came from further away. Um, and that's the model that we've gone for. And I suppose what we've realised for growing communities, working in a really, really highly populated urban area, that for us, a CSA one's farm scheme is really limiting and that for urban areas, something involving wholesalers and a wider range of farms has to be used. So, uh, why? I was trying to tr think about why some things that we've done have worked. What have been the secrets and in the manner of really irritating magazine articles everywhere, I've come up with the five Ps and those five Ps are... Oops, no they're not. Are these... <laughs> So the first one is people. Growing communities are really lucky. We've got amazing people working for us, and that's been one of our strengths. Not only are those people amazing, and I'm talking about the farmers we work with, the volunteers, um, our staff, but also all those people share a common vision. They share our vision of where we want to get to, and that's been absolutely critical for us, because it means that when people are answering the phone or packing bags in the pouring rain, they know what they're working towards, that's really critical. I also want to point out the real importance as well of working with as wide a range of people as possible in your community, not just because it's the morally right thing to do, because if you don't, you're actually missing out on ideas and talent that you're not going to come across otherwise. Um, I'm going to skip over some of these because I am running out of time, but a key thing about, you know, for people, the personal connections which people have made at growing communities between the box scheme and, and growing communities and the farmers and the market and people on that is that the majority of people who come to Growing Community to join our box scheme have heard about us through word of mouth. So that's really, really important. Skipping on, the principles. Our principles have been really important. Um, not just as a way of giving us, a way of checking if we're going in the right direction, but they've also been really important in a really practical direction. I've picked out trade fairly. Growing Communities pays its farmers well pays them fairly and it pays them on time which is really important and that relationship has been so critical to our success and to be able to do what we do. Um, it's meant that we've got potatoes when other people haven't because the farmers wanted to actually sell to us because he knows he's been paid and he's got a good relationship. Also within growing communities we've got a really fair pay structure. We've, no one in our organisation is paid less than the London living wage and the sort of pay differential between in growing communities is the highest salary in the organisation, which is not me, um, is just under two and a half times the salary of the person at the lowest wage in growing communities. Slightly different from Tesco, uh, which is differentially is 900. Uh, um, very unfashionably, given it's all about sharing, I'm going to talk about money. Money has been really important to us. It's really important to think about money. 
where the money goes, showing how much money goes to producers. I realised that when I, after I'd done this slide, it's actually a million pounds a year that grow in communities between the farmer's market and the box scheme is put in towards local farmers. That's a lot of money. Also, we're financially independent, and that's really, really critical to us in terms of deciding what we want to do and being able to move quickly. Uh, planning. There's a famous quote from Eisenhower here, yeah, a military general and leader, obviously. Um, it's really good to plan, but also it's good not to plan too long because sometimes people get too, much they get too caught up in the planning process. They're going over and over it in their minds and they don't actually do anything. Both Julie and myself come from a direct action background and actually, in the end, you've just got to do something and see how it works. And I'm just about to finish. Um, perseverance. Perseverance is a really old-fashioned word, but it's really, really important, especially when you've been around as long as us, to actually keep going. It's really easy to start something. It's really hard to keep it going. So you need that quality of perseverance. And to some extent, we've actually learnt that from a lot of the farmers we work with. You know, who do spend an awful lot of time, as Chris said, standing out in freezing cold fields, hacking out leaks with pitch... Not pitchforks, which you call them? Um, axes, actually, sometimes. Um, and finally, um, I've done all the P's, and now it's a Q. I think the most important thing for starting any project is to ask yourself questions. And that question should be, is it working? And if it isn't working, you need to check why it isn't working and what you can do about it. And if it is working, you also need to check why it's working. And then you need to spread that message out to the rest of us who are trying to help change the food system. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. For that one.